Hello dear crypto friends and welcome to this video in which we are going to take another look at the crypto market at Bitcoin and try to understand what kind of sick perverted game Bitcoin is playing with us. What is Bitcoin doing? And for that purpose I have loaded the 4 hour chart. And what can we see friends in the 4 hour chart of our good old friend Bitcoin? Here's the 4 hour moving average 200. And what do we see friends? We see that historically every time when Bitcoin has struggled to get through the moving average 200 in the 4 hour chart. For example here it broke down and needed a lot more time to break through. Then we had the same situation here also September 2021 right bam it broke down and then it needed another try. Then here we had a similar situation in December 2021. Okay here we broke down a lot and then we still didn't manage to consistently get through. And the last time this happened was when? Now. It was actually just a few days ago. And again, what happened? We got rejected by the moving average 200 in the 4 hour chart. And what can we expect? Well, we can expect a bit more volatility, maybe a wick down, maybe even if we are unlucky, a new low. Probably a few weeks down, a bit more time to consolidate until we get through this brutal moving average. This would of course speak for the theory friends, for the unnice theory which we all don't like so much that we need a bit more time here in this ugly range and that Bitcoin is basically repeating what it did from May 2021 until July 2021 where we had a very similar picture and this intermediary wobble here would be identified with this one. So we overlay it right we overlay this one and we can see if we try to fit the structure we try to fit it kind of like this this is almost a perfect fit. Then we can see what Bitcoin might be going to do if the fractal similarity will hold. That's always a big if. We know that fractals are a very nice tool for crypto and Bitcoin. They work very often, but sometimes they just don't because history doesn't always repeat exactly the same way. Mark Twain said history doesn't repeat, it rhymes. So sometimes it will work, sometimes not. But if this was going to repeat like in May to July 2021, we might wick down to, to shortly below this previous low here. So we might go to 25,000, then we wobble around a bit more, and then another low in the end of June. And then finally in July, we will go up. And I still maintain my picture that we are actually going up. Why? Why are you so bullish, Sebastian? Are, you are stupid. You are not smart. Uh, how can you believe that we are going up? Well, first of all, friends, we still have this super long hidden bullish divergence in play with higher lows in the price and lower lows in the stochastic RSI on the weekly. What the hell am I clicking here? Second of all, I think that Bitcoin is in a gigantic bull market that is quite stretched out uh, that actually here the the previous bull market ended here and that actually this was then an ABC type of correction here ABC type of correction, right? And then a new bull market started a new one started, which is now its own thing. One, two, three, four, five. And this whole thing here this whole thing friends was nothing more than an expanded flat correction a beautiful Elliott wave structure but this four wave is normally so drawn out that many times it is mistaken for a bear market and actually it has a lot of similarities and char characteristics of a bear market so that is still the picture i maintain and this is of course not only from Bitcoin itself, this is not only because of the RSI or even the monthly RSI where I said in the monthly chart we also are reaching the lowest RSIs that Bitcoin has ever reached. So it is quite likely that very soon we will continue going up. But no, it's got also to do as I said with the stock market because we know that the correlation with the stock market is increasing. For example, I have here the latest ARK Invest. Yes, friends, the latest ARK Invest PDF 
about Bitcoin, which is very nice. ARK Invest, they are very smart and they have sometimes some quite nice charts and metrics to look at. And if the PC wouldn't be so shitty and would actually manage to load this PDF, I could even look at it. Thanks a lot, PC. Okay, and here we see that the correlation between the S&P 500 and Bitcoin is reaching all-time highs with 80% positive correlation. So Bitcoin is being treated like a standard risk asset as we can see in this chart here and the correlation has been super positive since about more than half a year since late 2021. We have consistently been up at 60 to 80 percent correlation between Bitcoin and the Nasdaq and S&P 500. It is crazy. Actually this here contains some other useful charts. They also see that the dollar index is kind of risky for Bitcoin because if the dollar index continues to pump, we all know that is not good for Bitcoin because Bitcoin and the dollar index are inversely correlated. But they also say that we almost reached the lowest possible price when the cost basis, realized price, crosses the 200 week moving average. That is normally a time when there's consolidation and normally the price does not go below this crossing line. So we are very near the absolute bottom of Bitcoin, which is at, at around 22 to 23 thousand dollars. Another bullish sign for Bitcoin is, of course, the percent of people that are holding, if you will, holding for more than one year. And we see that every time when this line goes up, let me just zoom in a bit more. We see that every time the green line hangs all time highs, that corresponds to market bottoms. And we see that we are about to make a new all time high, which means it's quite likely that we are now in a market bottom. Then also this shows here the MVRV ratio and STH or MVRV ratio, which is, is just a fancy indicator name for finding market capitulation. So when this indicator is very low, the market has capitulated and short term holders are selling at a loss. And this is now super low, which always corresponds normally to market bottoms. Also interesting is the perpetual futures discount. And the perpetual futures discount suggests that we are now in an area which corresponds to market bottom because every time when the perpetual futures are at a discount compared to the regular Bitcoin price, this normally corresponds to market bottoms. Afterwards, we see that afterwards when the futures price is higher than Bitcoin's price, this corresponds to territories where we see major surges in Bitcoin price. It happened here, happened here, here and here. So this means all these things are quite bullish for Bitcoin. But I'm not done here. I'm not done because we will now look at the NDX and the Nasdaq. And last video I made the outrageous claim, the outrageous claim, friends, that I don't see the Nasdaq crashing, not this year, maybe next year and possibly, possibly even as late as in a few more years. Because if we look at the Nasdaq, how the inclination of the different Nasdaq phases of a bubble looks, we are still in this first phase and we are actually now just entering the second phase and I identify this thing here with probably this or this area if we zoom in on this way up here to the dot com bubble. I'm pretty sure that all these dumps here that now look quite insignificant to us. I'm pretty sure that every single time there was a very bad feeling in the market. We had a 20 almost percent correction. Then here we had a 28% correction, you know, and all on the way to the top of the bubble, we had corrections between 20 to 30% all the time. Here in 94, we had a 16% correction, then a big one in, the, in 1990, that was actually a 32% correction. Then, of course, the famous Black Friday or whatever it was called in 1987. That was actually 
a 40% correction almost. Yeah, like a 40% correction, 39.95. So all the time on the way up to the top of the NASDAQ bubble, we have 128%, 132% and 140% correction. So now we have also some more brutal corrections on the way up. Of course, we had the famous March 2020 correction with 30% and now we have one with 31% so this is not something that hasn't happened before and as long as we are not super rising insanely fast and as long as I don't see us getting into this last super inclined phase I think that we still have a few years in front of us with actually bullish price action in the stock market. Now I have loaded something quite interesting, friends. I have loaded crude oil and the Nasdaq. Like what? Why would you compare those two things? Well, in the comment section last time, someone compared oil and the dollar index and said that uh, now the dollar index is very much correlated to crude oil. And this could be an indicator that soon, because oil is pumping so much, it is overextended and that could lead the dollar index to dump and hence the Nasdaq to pump. And for that, I would like to look at long term correlations between oil and the Nasdaq. And we see that actually many times oil and the Nasdaq were pumping in union, right? For example, here in 2000 in the dot com bubble, the, there was a very there was a peak in oil and the Nasdaq at a similar time, right? And also here it was peaking together with oil. Also here in the famous March 2020 low, it was dumping together with oil, the Nasdaq. But now suddenly something happened, something strange happened. We zoom in, we zoom in and this is really mysterious friends. What the hell is going on? And suddenly what happens? Oil pumps, yes, okay. Nasdaq pumps, yes, okay. Oil pumps even more, Nasdaq dumps. What? So something has happened. The correlation between oil and stocks has somehow reversed. Something has changed. Something has changed. This would mean that the dollar index is now positively correlated to oil. And so this means that actually if oil would now start to dump, this would be actually good for stocks. Yes, friends, if oil is now overextended and starts dumping, this would actually lead to a big push in stocks. And why this is, this is because, in fact, the dollar index has now become very correlated to oil since the USA has become a net producer of oil. And if we go oil producing USA, we see that actually the USA, friends, Yes, the blue line is the USA is actually overtaking Russia and Saudi Arabia and has become the largest oil producing nation in the world. And that is why the whole relationship between the dollar index, between the stock market and between oil has completely changed. So in the past, we had this positive correlation. Oil was always spiking together with the stock market. It happened quite a few times, right? It happened here in 2000, right? The major bubbles, they correlated very nicely with oil, but now suddenly it doesn't do that anymore. And oil is pumping while the stock market is going down. And that is the reason why actually if oil starts dumping, that is excellent and very bullish for Bitcoin. As a very smart person, the comment section has pointed out, that is why the people here on this channel are so smart, friends please subscribe and join this channel because there are a lot of smart people here in the comment section. Okay, this is not like other channels. The average IQ here is like a minimum of 278. Okay, so please join this channel and you will find many amazing people here that make very good observations. And yes, indeed, if oil starts dumping now and look how overextended oil is, it has been pumping like crazy. Um, if oil would start dumping, I think this would be a good sign for the stock market. And of course, this would mean that the dollar index would dump. And this would mean that Bitcoin, our good coming back to our good old friend Bitcoin, it makes me even more bullish that everyone is bearish. This makes me like this makes me super bullish. If everyone is bearish, I get bullish. If everyone gets bullish, I get bearish. 
here everyone was bullish like crazy this should have been a warning sign that we are getting overheated and we should be bearish when that happens and now exactly the opposite is happening everyone is calling for 10k 15k i don't know outrageous lows so i think the probability that it will happen is extremely low i think we might with bad luck go to the ma200 but not much lower we could wick down to the ma200 in a quick wick but even that i think will not happen because too many people are expecting it so i think we are going to wobble around here like in may to july 2021 we are going to wobble around here and then bam at some point uh, surprising to many people we start pumping and going over 100k with bitcoin and many coins will pump and it will be awesome that is my picture friends still maintaining the bullish view i know i'm in the minority i know uh it's it's strange but that is my current view so if you found this video interesting if you think hey man this guy is talking not only about crypto but also about oil about stock market and whatnot please like and please subscribe to this channel because i'm normally making daily updates on the crypto market so then friends have a nice day and see you in the next video tomorrow bye